so I'm tired of hauling these tomatoes in and out. They're big plants, they're tippy, and even though I have them on a rolly cart, it's just not fun. And every year about this time, in fact, some years even earlier, I like to get them planted out in my garden. Now, all rules say do not plant your tomatoes out before your average last frost date. They cannot take frost, they can't take cold weather. But I have a secret and I'm gonna show you what it is. So let's go out to the garden and I'll show you how I'm gonna get these tomatoes planted two weeks before my average last frost date. And I'm not gonna worry about them. I'll also show you some of the other things that I use in my garden to uh, protect my plants over the growing season from early on to keep the, the frost and cold out to later when the bugs are attacking and again in the fall to help keep the frost and cold out. So let's get down to the garden and get things set up so that I can stop hauling these tomatoes in and out next week. So this behind me is my bed that I'm gonna be putting my tomatoes on this year. It's uh, four by eight feet and uh, it's about 10 inches tall off the ground. And most of my beds, including this one, are filled with a mixture of peat moss, compost, composted manure, and vermiculite. So that's what it's growing in. None of that is going to make it able to handle freezing temperatures and frosts to keep my tomatoes safe. But this is a combination of these plastic little tunnel tubes and some good old-fashioned water are going to keep my tomatoes safe. What these are is uh, I have two or three different brands here. Uh, the main ones you usually find will be called Cozy Coats or Wall of Water. The Wall of Water I have are green. I'll show you those in a minute. Mostly you'll find them in this red color. Um, so what it is is it's like a kind of a tunnel and uh, it's full of little tubes. And then you fill these little tubes with water all the way around and then you can push it in uh, so it's kind of closed up at the top while the tomato's young. The tomato plant's inside here. And then the water absorbs the heat of the sun during the day. It gets nice and warm. Tomatoes like that. And then the water, as the outside air cools down, will release its, its heat, but it will also um, hold enough heat inside and act as an insulation to keep your tomato plants safe. So I've only had, I've been doing this for, I gotta say five years now, maybe longer, could be longer. But uh, I've only had um, once where I've lost tomato plants and that was actually last year. And we had a really, really abnormally cold night. I had um, layers of ice in the yard, it was standing water, thick layers of ice. And I had, I think it was my Japanese uh, black trefelli tomatoes that just couldn't take that, uh, that cold temperature. But everything else I put out was fine. So, like I said, I've never, I've never had a lot of real issues with this. The hardest part is getting these set up. And I know that some of these have started to get holes in them. And uh, we've gotten to the point where some of them just won't stand up anymore because of the holes. So, like I said, I've been using this product for a lot of years. So some of these are pretty old already. Um, and some of them have started to get holes in the, uh, the little individual sleeves. The sleeves aren't connected. So um, if one sleeve gets a hole in it, usually it's not a big deal. And uh, I've just continued to use them, just not filling that sleeve. Or sometimes it's a higher up hole and you can just you know, fill the sleeve halfway or something. Um, but they've gotten to the point where some of them won't even stand up anymore. So I uh, purchased this repair kit. It's supposed to be little inserts that you can put into the sleeves that don't hold water. Um, and hopefully this will uh, solve my problem to keep some of them standing upright. So I'm gonna give that a try this year. I've never tried this before. And I've also purchased some more of these um, cozy coats. So um, people are gonna ask, where did you get them? 
Uh, they can be hard to find sometimes. Um, I have found them at PV Mart and I have found them at vessiseeds.com or vessies.com. I'm not sure um, what their website is. Uh, they sell them. I find them to be sometimes quite expensive there unless you can get them on a, on a good sale. And I have also found a link to them in, uh, on Amazon. So I'm going to put that link down below for you. You can check it out. I haven't purchased them from Amazon personally, uh, but that might be somewhere I look at next time I need more. Um, so I'm going to get these set up. I'll show you, show you one, uh, just so you can see how really easy they are to set up. And uh, I'll maybe when I find one that I need a, a sleeve in, I'll show you how that works too. Uh, I've never tried those before. Um, I'll look and see if I can find a link. I didn't look for a link. I'll look and see if I can find a link for these repair kits too. Um, but uh, we'll get that one set up and then while I'm doing the rest, I'll, uh, I'll let you watch a little tour video of some of the other things that I use in my, my garden here to combat the insects and the weather and uh, just see what, what I do because it's good to see what everybody does to, to uh, help protect the gardens and and get as much out of them as they can. So let's get one of these set up. What I find works well for this when you're setting them up is to stick a pail or an old pot or something in the middle just to help keep it a little bit stable till you get some water going in there. And then I want to make sure that my sprinkler lines are in the right spot because once you get these going it's kind of difficult to to get them moved around. So I've got my bucket in there and then you can use a, a watering can with a, an open nozzle on it or I find using um, a garden hose works well. I'm going to put this on the full setting and I have an adjuster so I can adjust uh, how fast or slow it comes out so I just kind of work my way. Open up one little tube fill it up and then I just kind of work my way around. Some of these brands you can kind of move around easier. Some are um, kind of seamed up higher to the top. It's a little harder to get your fingers in and just move the hose around but they're all pretty easy to work with. If you don't have a, a bucket or something in the middle I find it's best to go do one side and then kind of go across, do the opposite side, and then, you know, in the other kind of four corners, as it were. And that helps to kind of make it a little more stable so you can work your way around. But since I have a bucket in there, I can just go in a circle. And you'll see as it fills how the kind of the top wants to kind of lean in. And that's what you want. You want the outside to be wider than the, the top, or the bottom to be wider than the top. And then it'll lean in and kind of hold itself closed. And that'll hold that warm air in there at night. I like to set these up. Several nice sunny days before. I'm going to be using them. Helps to get the soil that I'm planting the tomatoes into nice and warm inside these these things, um, and uh, gets the water nice and warm so they're nice and ready for it. It does make planting the tomatoes a little bit trickier uh, because I'm going to be reaching down inside here, digging my hole and getting my tomatoes planted. So. You might want to use um, one of the other methods I'm going to show you later to warm your soil first, plant your tomatoes, and then set this up after. And when you're doing that, um, as far as putting the bucket inside, just flip the bu bucket upside down over your tomato um, while, you, while you fill this up and then remove it after, obviously, so you don't cook your tomato. 
But these are great because they regulate the temperature. Um, your tomatoes won't get, they won't get cooked inside here like some other coverings would do. Uh, even on really, I mean, I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada. We don't get crazy hot weather like some of you do down in the south, but uh, you know, even on hot days, these don't usually cook. So then I would pull this out and you see how it just closes up and you can um, get a clip to just hold them shut or tie some string around or lots of times I'll just kind of squeeze some of the water out and then they'll usually stay pretty, pretty tight together. Um, I usually take these off uh, after um, all risk of frost, a few weeks after my average last frost date. But some years I have just folded them down. You know, let's let the water out halfway and just folded the sides down. And it gives a good protection for the plant and, uh, you know, helps to, to keep things nice and warm through the summer, which in our, our climate here, like I said, Southern Saskatchewan, that can be something that's needed um, throughout the whole season. <laughs> But uh, the one thing I do find if you're going to do that to uh, flipping them down is you probably want to be a little bit extra cautious about slugs because it's a nice damp temperature controlled little area in that fold and uh, the slugs, the slugs uh, seem to like it and they'll kind of go and crawl up in there during the day and then they come out at night and eat your tomatoes. I don't have a problem with them when they're set up like this. I don't have a problem with slugs. It just doesn't seem to to attract them but um, once I get them folded down and there's all that dampness in there that's when it seems to happen also the longer you leave these out in the warm weather you will wind up with um, some kind of slimy LJ growth happening inside these tubes here so that's something else to to consider when you're thinking about whether you want to leave them up for the season fold it over or if you want to just take them right down but that's putting one up. Like I said, if I, when I come across one, and I know I will, where uh, one of these tubes just doesn't hold enough water anymore, I'll show you how those sleeves work and we'll, we'll figure that out together. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to keep filling these up and you don't want to see me do this over and over again. So let's have a look at some of the, uh, some of the other things that I use around my garden to help keep my, my plants safe and get a jump start. So... One of the very first things I did to get uh, a jump start on the season this year was I planted carrots along here uh, weeks, weeks ago. We've had a lot of very hard frosts and just downright freezes down into the negative double digits uh, in Celsius here. And it doesn't look like anything now because I've taken it off, but uh, I had taken some old uh, cocoa liners. Um, that were in uh, hanging baskets. And they're just, you can see, they're totally worn out. They're no good for hanging baskets anymore. But uh, they gave frost protection. They gave protection, because this time of year we have a lot of fluctuations. Very warm days, like it's gonna get up to 18 today and, and get down to freezing at night. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see here. I have carrot seedlings coming in along the rows here. There's other rows that have them. Or they're long. So uh, there's carrot seedlings coming up here where they were protected. There's more up right in there. And they're growing along nicely now. So I've taken the, the uh, cocoa liners off and I need to give them a water here by the looks of things, but they're coming up real nicely. Something else that I like to use early on in the season is uh, hoops with uh, harvest guard on them and you can see harvest guard on that right there and all it is is uh, PVC hoops like you're on this bed here uh, that bamboo cane is was just an experiment I did earlier it's it just doesn't work under there but uh, uh, most of my beds just have these uh, hose clamps like you can see down there holding the hoops in and then they're easily pulled in and out uh, and this bed here, over here, um, has has a wooden wooden frame that I have just a, that it's portable. Um, 
that I can move from bed to bed, and it's for my brassicas. And uh, I showed it in a video recently of planting out my brassicas, but there's a frame that the, uh, the hoops sit right in, and then this frame comes out, um, and I can move it to whatever bed my brassicas are on, because for my brassicas and other plants that uh, have a lot of uh, issues with pests, I can put this netting over it and it's a really good netting um, and then I just attach it to the hoops using more cut sections of the PVC pipe to hold it on there. Now this bed with these hoops on it, um, this is my garlic bed so I won't be doing it on this bed but uh, the bed I put my peppers in or you know, tomatoes some years or whatever I want just to get a little head start and get the, the soil warmed up. Maybe it's in a really cold spring and uh, the, there's still a lot of frost in the soil. I'll put these hoops up and I'll just take a piece of uh, poly plastic like you would use for a building that's a little bit heavier duty plastic and uh, I'll just put it over the hoops and fashion it with the clips the same as I used uh, on, on that bed over there on the netting and it holds it down really well. So with this style of uh, setup I was putting this plastic on and it's just a good heavy duty plastic like I said from you know builders use it to, to help with uh, uh, keeping homes you know moisture on the on the cold side of the, the walls and that so uh, and then I just put it over and with the high winds it can really lift this plastic so what I find works well with this type of setup where the hoops you know just slide in and out is I'll just take uh, run the poly right over all the hoops and then I'll take one of these clips clip it over the poly and over this hoop here and then that's just holding it and then this can't lift in and out because the clip is holding it on like that so and I've also seen people put screws through and you could just put it through so it it's there and it stops stops the hoop from moving if you put a screw through the, the hoop, but I like these little clips works well and it just keeps it, it can't move that way. So I do that. Um, so that's something I'll do and that can uh, create a real little greenhouse in here to really heat up the, um, the soil, get it ready in the spring. Um, plastic doesn't hold heat uh, overnight very well, um, not in our climate, that's for sure. So uh, you can't really count on it for really cold nights to protect plants from, from freezing. Um, so it's great for warming up the soil and you have to be careful to open it up if you do have plants in there at night, uh, you know, for just getting real light frost and that. Um, but you need to make sure that you're opening the plastic up during the day, you know, even just venting the ends, you know, folding them back and clipping them back um, so air can move through so they don't get too hot and uh, cook your plants. If you've been enjoying this video, why not give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right now. That'll really help my channel and, and get the word out to everyone. And also, make sure you're sharing it uh, with anyone you think could use the information. So something that I'll do, um, if I'm using the, the poly plastic over these tunnels, but it's gonna be getting cold at night and I'm trying to, to keep the heat in a little bit at night, Something very similar to using the cozy coats is I'll fill these uh, four and five gallon type jugs up and I'll fill them with water during the day so they can absorb the heat of the day. I'll put them in under the, under the uh, plastic um, around the plants and try and protect the plants that way. And then they'll do the same as the cozy coats is help to, to release some of the heat from the water at night um, to, to help protect the plants a little bit. And it actually, can do a pretty good job of giving you a little bit of protection for some some cooler nights you know if you get a an unexpected uh, cold night uh, late in the spring or early in the fall if you can get organized to get that done um, it can go a long way to helping your plants you don't even have to have the plastic over um, or you could even do some of the harvest guard over or just have just this around the plants and it will still give some protection but um, so that's that's worthwhile to, to collect things like this up and just have them have them available. I have a whole shelf in my shed of just one shelf just full of these, I don't know, a dozen of these or so. So that works pretty well. 
something else that can help to extend the season a little bit is just to take something like these hot caps and you can even just use a, a, a milk jug, cut the bottom off and set it on if the plant is small enough. Then you can open and close the lid. Um, but with this, these come um, with clips. Oh, I grabbed one that's too big, but there's little holes in the side so you can stick stakes in to hold it down. And then they have a little thing on the top you can open and close. So during the day, you'd want to open it to make sure you're letting the heat out so it doesn't cook your plant. At night, you would close it again. I don't find plastic is that insulating. Um, but on cooler days, or if you're not getting like an actual frost, but just getting cooler at night, this might, this small space will hold a little bit of trap, a little bit of heat inside. The smaller space you get um, with plastic, uh, it, the better it will work for something like this, uh, for holding a little bit of heat at night. Um, but uh, this works well. And these I got at um, the Dollar Tree, I think a few years ago, I picked a bunch of these up. So, and they came in different sizes, I believe. So it's nice that they have this little spinny thing. But like I said, you could also use a gallon milk jug, cut the bottom off and just hold onto the lid. So you can take the lid off during the day to let the heat out, put it back on at night or just lift the jug off and on. The one thing I find with these, and you probably don't see me using a lot in my garden, is um, my, my beds are, are very loose with the soil and so the staking doesn't always work that well for me. Sometimes they'll blow off with high winds, especially in the spring when I'm trying to protect plants. If you have burlap sacks, burlap around, throwing that over small seedlings that you have out, you know, young bedding plants or young seedlings that can take a little bit of weight this will protect your plants from frost overnight. So you would have to take it off during the day, but it will give you some protection at night. Same with an old sheet. A couple more things that I do to help protect from you know, the cold and help get things warmed up. Here's a planting bed that I just built here um, this past fall. I don't even know if I've really showed it to you yet. But it's a great example here. I have a large sheet of plexiglass, so I can pop that over top and it creates a greenhouse effect in there. Um, so I, I actually had the soil warmed up. I could have been planted in here a long time ago and uh, it's really warmed the soil up well for me and I could use it to, to give my plants a little protection. It doesn't go end to end, um, so I could put a board across the end or I have a smaller piece I could stick at the end. Um, and then it's easy to just lift off during the day. I can even just prop it up if I wanna just let a little bit of heat out, um, have it like that. So that works well too. Uh, here is a little pop-up, a uh, little greenhouse that I have. And uh, it's pretty handy. It's, it doesn't quite fit to my four by eight beds very well, but these new uh, raised fabric beds that I have are the perfect size to put it over. And I actually used it inside my cold frame this year just for a little extra protection. Like I said, plastic doesn't uh, totally hold the heat in, but if you get a couple layers like this, it, uh, it'll go a long way. Um, so this little greenhouse has, has doors that open all the way down and around. So there's two that I can open right up, one there, one there. And it has uh, little spots to stake it down. And then it has some strings there on both ends that you could stake. And then if you're worried about pests, but you want to vent it during the day, you could leave the doors closed. And there's two windows on this, on this side of it with a mesh over top that'll keep the, uh, keep the, the insects and, and pests out but still allow some, some heat to escape so you're not cooking your plants during the day when the sun's shining in. I don't actually have anything growing in here right now. I was just checking to see if it would fit. And this folds up flat. Um, I'll show you the bag it's stored in. So this big tunnel that I believe is about three feet by six feet, it has uh, hoop legs that come around and they fold into a circle. And then it just goes into this bag and it's flat like this. It goes back in really easy. The zipper goes, I don't know, halfway around the bag. So it opens up really wide. It's really easy to put this back away and store. I've had this for years. And for pest control, 
these little hoop tunnels work well. I have two different tunnels here. I have this one here, it has a little bit uh, larger netting on it. And then this one back here is a fine mesh. They're made by the same brand. You can actually get these with, with Harvest Guard on them as well, I believe. And they come in a few different sizes. This is, what do they call it? Like the giant size or something. Um, yeah, giant, giant size. So this is uh, about two feet wide by almost 10 feet long. And it's about a foot and a half tall. And these, like I've, I have it condensed right now. There's little metal hoops that hook into the ground here and you could spread them out quite a distance. I just have it condensed here to fit on my fabric bag beds. They have a little drawstring at either end that you can open this right up and get right inside and then tuck it away. And they're actually handy because you can just push it up to work in the bed as well and access your plants and then just tuck it back down and secure it down to keep the, the critters out. So it works good to keep, you know, birds out or rabbits out. Uh, it keeps, this one doesn't work as well for um, some insects like flea beetles will still get through here. It'll keep your, uh, your cabbage moths and things out. Uh, this one will keep um, carrot flies, flea beetles, pretty much anything out. It's a very fine mesh. Uh, but they still let the sun through and they just store in these little bags here. The green one I've had for several years. I've used it quite a bit. The yellow one is brand new to me this year, but it seems to be just as good a quality uh, made by the same company. And uh, I really like these. And then of course I have my cold frame that uh, was new to me last spring. And uh, it's been really nice. It's a great place to put some of those plants that are fairly cool hardy but still need a little bit of protection or that I'm wanting to harden off. I'm, I'm using it mostly for things that uh, can stay out overnight but maybe aren't quite ready to be out in the ground yet. Uh, but it's, it's worked really well for me. I'm very happy with it. Um, if I was going to buy one again, I, I would probably buy, I don't know, I might buy a, a more permanent style greenhouse but for now this works for me. I can move it. I've actually changed the direction of how it was oriented from last year and I was able to just pick it up and turn it around on my own and anchor it back down. It has great anchoring system, stays together. I took the plastic off over the winter because we get a lot of snow here, but it has a big door that has two zippers that'll come down easily. And it has a window with mesh in it that opens at this end and at the other end. And it actually has a system that these sides will roll up about this high um, on both sides as well, just a little bit more airflow through, um, which I found really helpful in the summer. But uh, I don't, I've been really happy with it so far. So here's one that's leaking. I don't know if you can tell in the, the frame there, but there's this is full. This one is empty down here and I'm going to fill it up so you can see. There's actually a pretty good leak right there. I think you'll be able to, yeah, there you go. You can see that. So I'm gonna try one of these. You know these repair sleeves here. So they're just clear. I pulled one out and uh, as far as I can see, there's no real instructions on how to use them, but I'm guessing it's not that complicated. But I'm thinking, I get it kind of started going in here and then put water in. Maybe it'll kind of push its way down the rest of the way. Let's see how this works. So there it's sinking in and pushing the other water out. 
pushing the water that was in the tube at the bottom of that hole there and sliding in there. The plastic, I don't know if it's as thick as some of the newer ones, but probably doesn't need to be because it'll have this other outer layer to kind of give it a little bit of protection, but it is pretty thick. It's, it's similar, but I don't think it's quite as thick. So I've never used these sleeves before. We'll see how they work. That okay, went in there pretty good. I wasn't sure how that would work. So I had some that were really falling over last year and a couple that maybe are like that. So it looks like I wound up with two here that are really falling over and lopsided. I think they both have a tube or two that are uh, not holding much water. So I'll try some of those in here as well. And uh, like I said, I've never used those repair sleeves before, so I don't know how well they'll, they'll work out. I'll try and remember to let you know next time we're working around these and, uh, you know, in the following years. But uh, it went in there really well. I'm pretty impressed with that. So I'll try and fill these ones up here and, and uh, hopefully they work out as, uh, as well as they, they went into the, the whole sleeve here. So hopefully you found this uh, video interesting and uh, maybe learned something new. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you use season extenders or what you do or if there's something here that you thought might be something useful for you in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.